Hello everyone and welcome to today's science video in which we are going to be looking at food webs. This concept might be something that is very familiar to you if you have studied food chains in the past. This is something that I have made a video about previously and it's something that you may have studied in a previous science class before. So this is going to take a lot of those same concepts and ideas and build upon them. Food webs are really interesting because they're a more realistic view of how energy and food is consumed within an ecosystem. So to begin, let's do a little bit of review on food chains and the different parts of them. So a food chain is a linear sequence of organisms through which nutrients and energy pass as one organism eats another. The key term here is linear. It means we start with one species, which is then eaten by another, which is then eaten by another, and maybe another. And it goes in a straight direct line. There's no cross paths or different directions which it can go. It's that one specific line. And this line starts with what we call producers or autotrophs, and they make their own organic molecules. And if you're not a producer, that means that you're a consumer or, or a heterotroph, which means you get organic molecules by eating other organisms. Now you may remember the idea of a trophic level. So within a food chain, each organism occupies a different trophic level, which are defined by how many energy transfers separate it from a basic input of the food chain. Sunlight provides energy for our autotrophs, which is that in initial input. And then our trophic levels are decided and defined by how many transfers separate it. But let's go a little bit further into, into defining those different trophic levels. That first trophic level is taken up by our primary producers, which are autotrophs, as I said before. And these are most often photosynthetic organisms because they can make their own energy. So our plants, our algae, and a lot of different forms of bacteria. Our second trophic level is our primary consumers, and these are usually herbivores or plant eaters. Th our third trophic level is our secondary consumers, and secondary consumers typically are going to be your meat eaters or carnivores. Next you have your tertiary consumers, which are carnivore eating carnivores. Finally, your last trophic level is going to be your coordinary consumers, which are your carnivores, which eat tertiary consumers. These are organisms at typically the top of the food chain, which we refer to as apex consumers. There's one other type of, there's one other classification of species, which is important to note when talking about food webs, and that is decomposers. They don't always appear in drawings of food chains because you don't necessarily think of them as eating another organism. That's because they break down dead organic material and waste. So our decomposers are different, typically different bacteria. So now that we have reviewed all of that and we understand how all the different working parts can come together, we can now come up with a very cohesive definition of what a food web is itself. Food webs consist of many interconnected food chains and are more realistic representations of consumption relationships in ecosystems. In order to understand why it's a better representation, let's look at a food web itself. The first food web that we're going to look at is one of a desert biome. In this specific food web, we have three types of primary producers. We have our star cactus, our grass, and then our regular cactus. These are taking up our first trophic level because they are taking in that sunlight and producing organic molecules that will then be transferred to the rest of the food web. As you can see, there's a whole lot of lines here on this food web to take in. So let's look at just a couple of examples in order to get a better idea. So let's start right in the middle with grass. Grass is then eaten by both the rabbit and the grasshopper. Notice how there's more than one line coming off of grass. This is what makes it a food web rather than a food chain. Remember, food chains are linear, so they can only have that one direction in which they go. Whereas grass now has two different directions it goes, it's no longer linear. These two organisms then become primary consumers, which then go on to feed different organisms within this food web. Let's follow the rabbit. The rabbit is then eaten by a couple of different organisms. The rabbit is then consumed by both the rattlesnake and the hawk 
in living material. That means if we're following this food chain, the rattlesnake and the hawk are fulfilling that secondary consumer trophic level. But you'll notice there's an additional line that connects the rabbit to bacteria. You'll notice everything is connected to bacteria. That's because bacteria is the decomposer in this ecosystem. And so when each of these different organisms eventually dies and becomes dead organic material, the different bacterias within this desert biome are going to consume the dead material in order to get energy. Decomposers are a very, very important part of food webs and that is why bacteria is placed in a position where every single organism is connected to it. For another example, let's find another food chain within this desert biome food web. For this example, we're only going to be following one singular food chain and identifying the different how these organisms are identified within this food chain. So the star cactus, acting as our primary producer, is then eaten by the kangaroo rat. So the kangaroo rat, being then in our second trophic level, is our primary consumer. There's a couple of different things that eat the kangaroo rat, but for this example, let's say that the kangaroo rat, in particular, that we are looking at, is then eaten by a tarantula. The tarantula then becomes the secondary consumer, taking up that third trophic level. The tarantula, in turn, is eaten by a rattlesnake. The rattlesnake becomes the tertiary consumer, making it occupy the fourth trophic level. The next step of this food chain has the rattlesnake being eaten by a hawk. That makes the hawk our coronary consumer, occupying a fifth trophic level. In this case, our hawk is our apex consumer. It's at the top of this food chain within its living capacity. But you'll notice once all of these organisms um, pass away and become dead organic material, they are going to be consumed again by that decomposer, by that bacteria. That is why the hawk then has an arrow pointed to bacteria. In order to apply all that you've learned today, I want to challenge you all with this next food web. I want you all to identify the following things. A, the primary producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, coordinary consumer, your apex predator, and your decomposer. And then what trophic level each of those is going to occupy. Remember, all food chains within the food web aren't necessarily going to fill each and every trophic level. See how many food chains you can identify no matter how far they get within the different trophic levels. This is a great challenge and a great way to apply your knowledge. So great job today, everyone. I hope you learned a lot, were able to review the knowledge that you already had about food chains and realize how interconnected they really are within an ecosystem, creating these very, very important food webs. That is all for today and keep up the good work.